We've already covered a lot of the Egyptian gods in Yu-Gi-Oh here. However, the gods go also far beyond Egypt. The most famous example of this will probably be the god of Orichalcus, better known as the Great Leviathan in the dub. The fourth season of Yu-Gi-Oh Duel Monsters or the Waking the Dragons arc is probably one of the most popular but controversial points of the series. But what can't be denied is that we were given some iconic moments by the seal of Orichalcus and everything around it. And since darts or rather the Orichalcus god pulled the strings behind everything it would be interesting to know what exactly is behind it, especially because the info is not served to us clearly and you have to play around a lot with the individual details. Let us therefore begin with the point with which we have always started so far, the original inspiration of the god. One thing you have to give the dub here is that the Great Leviathan is really a good name for the Orichalcos god, since you can actually draw some references to it. I actually approached it with some doubts at first, since we know how much was changed unnecessarily and without meaning in the dub. But the Leviathan is one of the points that they have implemented well. In the different versions of the mythology of the Leviathan we get the following points that are mirrored with the Orichalcos god. The Leviathan can be considered a sea monster and that among other things in the form of a sea dragon or sea serpent. Exactly this applies to the Orichalcos god, who visually goes in a sea serpent direction, was sometimes even considered a dragon and was seen most of the time underwater. In addition, the Leviathan carries the role as the soul of the world and also that of an evil devil which reflects the symbol of sinfulness of the people. The Orichalcos god exists only through the hatred and the darkness of the world and the people which can be well pointed out. The Leviathan also separates several worlds in which it causes chaos, devouring souls of people, just like the Orichalcos god that caused problems in both our world and the Duel Monsters world, draining vast amount of souls from both worlds. The last reference I could find was that the Leviathan was defeated by God in the end, as we had it in Yu-Gi-Oh in the end that the pharaoh together with the Egyptian gods brought down the Orichalcos god. With that we would have the origin inspiration through. Thus we come to the abilities of the Orichalcos god and believe me it's going to be quite something. When you go through his abilities you just wonder how such a being can be defeated at all. But well, let's start with the abilities that the Orichalcos itself brings. It is an energy source that can be used for everything, be it for energy, medicine, protection and so on. This energy supplied by a single hail of Orichalcos stones has propelled Atlantis from a medieval state to such a futuristic state that far surpasses our time. And this happened in a very short time 10,000 years ago. One can only use the power of the Orichalcos to control the environment, be it the weather, how natural elements behave and other things. And that without limits in the range because it includes the whole world. You can also create anything you want with it. For example, Dart simply summoned a sword from the sky that was strong enough to hurt the legendary dragons. Or in combination with an Orichalcos stone, even life can be created, just as Dart summoned his Orichalcos soldiers. Wherever Orichalcos energy is present, you can also keep an eye on everything. This also affects a pretty much unlimited field of view since you can hail Orichalcos chunks all over the world. You also have to some degree the ability to manipulate reality. So Tarts could simply move from one place to another as soon as he passes through a mirror or simply change his appearance. For example, he once simply changed his clothes or changed his entire presence to that of Kozaburo Kaiba to cause more trouble. Thoughts can be controlled as well as manipulated, you can absorb souls, attacks, energies and so on. It also seems to stop the aging process as starts could live for over 10,000 years without growing old, let alone dying. And otherwise the Orichalcos awakens people's inner darkness, boosting it so high that people turn into monsters. Yes, that was quite a bit. However, it was only the power that the Orichalcos alone delivers. We haven't even talked about the god itself. The sole presence of the Orichalcos god puts the world in all natural disasters. The Orichalcos god can exist simultaneously in several worlds and can extract hundreds of souls with its naked eye, which we have seen well in the world of dual monsters. 
It can interact with the world even from the afterlife and open portals to other worlds. In addition, the Orikalkos god is literally immortal as long as the world has darkness in it. Thus, even after the gods physically destroyed it, it could continue to exist as a soul and attack the pharaoh. The main attacks of the Orikalkos god are also a blast that it shoots out of his mouth that was so strong at the time that it could match an attack of all three Egyptian gods combined. And it shoots with explosive scale that could one-shot the most monsters, including the legendary knights. However, the strength of the Orichalcos god depends on how many souls full of darkness it has absorbed and how high the darkness of the world is. In the past, for example, we saw how the Orichalcos god seemed very much on par with the legendary dragons, while the revived form was so strong that no one but the gods could even scratch it. A subsequently weakened form of the Orichalcos god was even capable of stopping Obelisk the Tormentor, which puts the Orichalcos god at least on the first Hirachi rank of the gods, which was well illustrated to us. And this was after the pharaoh had transformed all the darkness of the souls in the Orichalcos god into positive light. That means the weakened form was god level 1, which could mean that he might have been even higher before that. But yes, with that we are finally done with the power section. As I said, there was a lot to unpack here, and even there I kept it short. You can simply say that the Leviathan can definitely play in the realm of the stronger gods. Let's come to the history of the Orichalcos god. Since the Leviathan was the soul of the world in our mythology, we can assume that the Orichalcos god exists since the world exists, or rather as soon as the first darkness spread on the world, since his existence is the darkness of the world itself. However, we have no other information going back further than what happened in Atlantis over 10,000 years ago, so let's continue there. Humans in the world were one in harmony and peace 10,000 years ago, and this was very well demonstrated in Atlantis, where the humans and the dual monsters lived together peacefully in a small empire. This peaceful time was possibly the reason why the Orichalcos god did not physically exist there and had to be revived. But as we have learned, the Orichalcos god can interact with the world even from the afterlife. And so one day dark clouds in the form of a dragon gathered over Atlantis and the earth shot out some stones that became Orichalcos. Humans used this Orichalcos to achieve immeasurable progress, thus Atlantis transformed into a futuristic place in a very short time. However, the people changed gradually as well, only to monsters instead of any advanced beings. The Orichalcos awakened their darkness and brought them out so much that their physical form changed. After that, the king of Atlantis lost his wife to it and saw the Atlantean society perish, the Orichalcos called out to him, making Darth understand and what it was all about, that the Orichalcos god exists and that the world is too full of darkness. The Orichalcos god tested mankind with the Orichalcos whether they could withstand the darkness or be eaten by it, and it clearly became the second one. Dance had given himself the task to reset the world, to destroy the rotten people and to create new ones. Darts took the souls of the Atlantis inhabitants for the Orichalcos got to revive him, while his father Ironheart, together with Darts' daughter Chris, summoned the dual monster spirits as support. Among them were the legendary knights and the legendary dragons respectively. Both sides got into a big fight that led to an end for both sides. Darts was the only one who got out alive. The rest either died or were sealed. In that case, it was the legendary dragons that were sealed with the Orichalcos god in the dual monsters world. Ironheart sealed the gate to the dual monsters world and thus everything came to an end for a long time. However, after 7000 years the world plunged back into darkness. That was when the Egyptians used the dual monster spirits as a weapon and the next great darkness was reawakened by Bakura and Zorg. That was when Darts decided to resurrect the Orichalcos god, this time to destroy the world of humans and that of the dual monsters. There were only two ways, either you destroy the inhabitants of the world or the world itself, otherwise you don't get rid of the darkness of the world. And because the human world is connected with the world of the dual monsters, respectively they need each other to exist. Both have to be wiped out in that case. Because the conflict in ancient Egypt settled down when the pharaoh sealed Zorg, it came to rest from Darth's side for the time being. 
However, after 3000 more years, the seal was broken again when Yugi solved the Millennium Puzzle and the Dark Souls were all reunited. So Darts got the three Egyptian God Cards and used their powers to open the gate of the Dual Monsters world and get access to the Orakalkos God again. The Orakalkos God started absorbing souls from both worlds and everything spiraled up until he was finally resurrected by the soul of Darts and the two became one. The Orakalkos God seemed to be a hopeless defeat for the Pharaoh and co. Until the Pharaoh was able to unleash his true power and transform the power of darkness and everyone into positive light energy. As Pharaoh, he summoned the proper manifestations of the Egyptian gods that could defeat the Orichalcos god after a battle. However, the Orichalcos god still existed in a spiritual form because the darkness of the world kept him alive. The Pharaoh absorbed all the darkness of the world and thus the Orichalcos god and tried to transform it into positive light energy through bonds and memories. And that led to the end of the Orichalcos god. And this is it for the story and explanation of the Orichalcos God. I really loved the Waking the Dragons arc a lot, so I really wanted to make some videos about it, starting with the Great Leviathan. I hope I was able to explain everything as clear and understandable as possible. I would appreciate you to like this video and subscribe to this channel if that was the case. Feel free to write your opinions on the Orichalcos God and if I could change your view onto him in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, this is it for this video, have a great day and we see us in my next video. Bye!